Good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you. We were thinking that it might rain today and uh, the whole fun will be spoiled but luckily the weather has become better. And again to emphasize the theme of the event that the prediction would not have been there had there been no data driven analysis of the meteorological data. Having said that, once again, we are here to discuss and debate about penetration of data driven approach, computational approach and artificial intelligence in various forms in creative endeavors. That's what we are here to discuss for and we intend to have opinions taken, debates done and hopefully not to make a conclusion but to understand where do we stand today and how possibly invasion of artificial intelligence can be of value to us and how it can be used for benefit of humanity. Having said that, to begin with the symposium's uh, proceedings, I would like to invite Professor Ranjan Bose, the director to apply to Delhi, to give his opening remarks about the theme of the symposium. Professor Bose. Great to see all of you for this very, very exciting event which deals with computational creativity. A theme which Ganesh discussed with me some time back and the day we had the discussion, we were you know, very, very excited to have. This is a unique kind of an excitement. So first of all, congratulations to the team for putting this together. It could not be more uh, better time than this one. And thank you all for coming here today, Saturday morning, for this interesting set of deliberations. So we have been talking about chat GPT now in the breakfast time, right? It, it has become a part of a conversation. But before we embark upon the next phase, it is important for us to realize what AI can do and what AI cannot do in terms of creativity. And this question will keep on changing because this is a moving target. Some things we know about. For example, AI can make, most often, sense of large data. And one thing that we humans have become very good at is generating more and more data. I mean, there's data on how much data we are generating per day, right? And, and this is going to increase. That means one thing can be guaranteed, even though the future cannot be predicted, is we will be immersed in more kinds of data. I mean, a couple of days back, um, the Honorable Prime Minister announced the launch of 6G as a vision towards the next generation mobile phones and wireless systems. And the basic thing about it is it will be able to generate more data, transfer more data. We will be immersed with data. And therein, the first good news comes in that AI should be able to make some sense of this excessive amount of data because it's good in looking at patterns. It is good at giving us the big picture. And it is good at removing redundancies so that we humans can do a better job of doing work with the data. So I think therein lies this debate. Somebody asked me in the morning, hey, will AI replace humans? That, that question you can debate forever. The question is, we're not competing. We're supposed to collaborate. AI is a tool. Can AI be used by humans to get to the next level? to basically make sure that we reach higher. And, and that's the attitude we should take here. So this creativity is the next barrier. We were worried. Music, cooking, you know, art. AI is breaching all the boundaries. What will we do? Of course, we'll do a lot more things. I was looking at those paintings and the Turing test for you know, um, AI, where, you know, the same thing was given to Dali and same thing was given to a human artists. And I was trying to make a difference. And then I also realized that it's not about judging who did a better job because a part of the judgment lies with the observer. And the observer is invariably the human being. And, and, and that's where the difference will be. And that's one reason why AI will take some more time to replace humans in all forms of creativity. So coming back to this, this wonderful workshop, creativity, you see creativity all over the place. Look at the whiteboard, right? Some people have just gone there and you know, put their hearts out. During this pandemic, 
there was this gentleman who was, I'll not name him higher up in the ministry. He would attend so many meetings and he would be bored. So all he would do is take a white sheet of people and just doodle, right? And the next meeting, he'll create another doodle. Next meeting, he's in. Now he has cut them out, made a collage out of it and made a huge painting that he put behind his back. And those are the creativity he has gone through while sitting in boring meetings. So creativity can find place anywhere at any time. With that, I wish this workshop all the very best. And I'm sure all of you will have a lot of questions and interactions. So please make the best out of it. And we have some eminent guests and keynote speakers here. And I think that will be a very, very informative session. So thank you so much. And again, congratulations to the organizers. Thank you. To introduce the Infosys Center for Artificial Intelligence as well as its endeavors and to also give us initial pitch about this interface of AI and creativity, uh, let me call upon the head of the Center for Artificial Intelligence, uh, Professor Debar Kasen Gupta. Uh, an institute is ought to be uh, the epicenter of knowledge dissemination and I think uh, IIID does it uh, very frequently and uh, this particular program will make sure that the outreach of the computational creativity is widespread and uh, it's not only you know confined within the um, supremacy of AI uh, knowledge and all so this is a very nice event for that matter now I have a few things to talk about number one is what is CAI Center for Artificial Intelligence is um, you know uh, is a sponsor for this particular event so and Ganesh is part of Center for Artificial Intelligence and you have several faculties here so it's a center that was built in 2015 uh, by a generous funding from Infosys Foundation. And it has active 24, 25 active members who are all faculties in IIIDD. They're working on different frontiers of artificial intelligence research, including, as Ganesh said, autonomous vehicles, space navigation, uh, you know, health, and uh, federated learning, and a lot of other very exciting things, okay? So you want to check out the website that we have and you'll learn more about what we are doing and you, can, you are welcome to engage. And we are getting more active with every passing days. Um, now, the other thing is, uh, let me tell a little bit about my perception because I was uh, really um, um, chased by a lot of uh, news channels and media <laughs> for whatever good or bad reasons to speak about generative AI and the recent surge with the advent of this chat GPT. So I'm extremely impressed like everybody else. At the same time, I, I think there's a huge hype around it. So I think today uh, this session will uh, burst some of the myths about uh, some of these hypes, I guess. Uh, now what is, uh, so like humans started speaking a long time ago and then the grammar came, right? It takes, the, the grammar comes later. The invention comes first, which is the language itself that makes us communicate came first. And then after several years of understanding of how the language works, we came up with the grammar that we confined, tamed the language inside the grammar. So we cannot come up with grammar for everything. For example, we cannot come up with the grammar of uh, creativity. And, and, but this has now been possible with generative AI, with sequence to sequence models such as transformers and all other things like, you know, I, I don't want to mention too many names of the algorithms. But if you really critically think about it, it's basically the grammar that we are inventing and the grammar is still a black box in most of the cases. We are explainable AI is still something that will take time to work in the way it is expected to work. But we are trying to come up with grammars for everything. Grammar for content writing, grammar for you know, art. And there is, a, there is a benefit of doing so because you are able to ingest a lot of data to come up with this grammar. What looks nice, what doesn't look nice. So AI is basically creating things that look human. Right. And very interestingly, I was just, I, because I do a lot of computational biology research out of my interest. So I was looking at how many neurons, because you know all these things are coming from neural networks, neural networks, right? How many neurons do you have in this GPT-like architectures? Do you have any guess, like GPT-3, how many neurons do you think it has? If, if my information is not wrong, it's about 60 billion plus number of neurons, which is a huge number of neurons, right? By the way, you know how many neurons we have as humans? 80 billion neurons, right? We don't have a lot of information. So what is generative AI? It is information plus, imp information plus improvisation. Humans have been doing improvisation all the way through, right? 
humans, each human. So all of us is 80 billion neurons sitting here. You multiply with the number of participants. It's that much of neurons you have. So there's no reason for humans to worry about the neural network taking over and the doomsday and all that. It's not going to happen, by the way. But the fact that it is, it is learning from huge amount of data would make it a very powerful companion for humans. And you will be expected to do a lot more things from your software company, from your content, com content generation company. You as an individual will be expected to deliver a lot more because you have these tools, just like Ranjan said. Right? So that is my perception about it. One problem is, uh, so if you ask, for example, Chad GPT to write a content on the recent earthquake in Iran, you ask, no matter how many times you ask it, it will give you the same answer, right? It's not going to change. But you ask a human, each one of you will write something different, right? And that's it. Now, you know how much money is spent in training a single epoch of a chat GPT kind of a model by looking at this one? It's a huge, right? It runs into millions. A single epoch I'm talking about. So that is AI supremacy, essentially. Now, the point is, you cannot... Um, you cannot make it, even after spending so much of money, it is not so trivial to prompt it to generate completely different sort of discourses on the same matter of facts. But humans can, all of you will write something different. So here is some, you know, balancing out activities that I did about just putting your perspectives correct uh, through my lenses of seeing things, right? Finally, I would, I'd end with more encouraging things that are happening, apart from this DALI and mid-journey and all these things we are seeing, which are very attractive to common people. That's why they are getting a lot of media attention. But there are more outstanding research happening uh, in all disciplines of science and arts and humanities. And uh, here I'll give a couple of examples to end my note, right? I, I was in a conference in Madurai, a few, uh, Kodai Canal, a few days, weeks back, and there I saw at least five, six researchers talking about this extraordinary field of using AI and you know this variational autoencoder and different kinds of sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, normalizing flows, and all sort of exciting algorithms that learn the distribution of things. They are using it to learn how do molecules, the drugs, look like what kind of drugs are real drugs and what kind of drugs are rubbish, right? So they are learning generative AI models on drug structures and they are using that for creating new drug candidate which can be then validated. I think that's an extremely powerful application because chemical space is so huge, right? I mean, I don't know, 10 to the power, some, you know, X to the power 10 number of molecules are actually possible in our world. And, you know, no human can comprehend that. Uh, and, and finally, if you look at physics, right, I, I saw some um, recent articles. Uh, they are using craft neural network and uh, symbolic regression in tandem to generate physical laws that took years to come about. The Newtons and Einsteins, you know, there is a paper called AI Feynman. You must look at it. It's in science advances. Right? So there are a lot of such papers which are generating physical laws. Uh, that's a pretty exquisite, you know, kind of a science, right? And I think uh, the more and more of that sort of things, uh, you know, we appreciate and we learn and we are capable of doing, then we'll, we'll actually contribute in a positive way to, to the progress of science. With that, I don't want to take more time because there are, there's a, a huge pipeline of speakers and I'm also very excited to hear them all out. And thanks, everybody. Given the way the symposium has been planned, it was pretty obvious for us that it cannot be a set of monotonous lectures. So rest assured, they are expected to be as accessible as possible and ideally entertaining. Having said that, we had to ensure that we have something exciting happening since we are talking about the interface of AI and human. So we had two competitions set on the one on vision and painting, artist, artistic activity, and the other is that of musical. Uh, creativity. The, port, the paintings which are out there in the foyer display us competition between a human and AI. And this, in this case, we have chosen one specific AI called Dali, uh, Dali 2 of uh, OpenAI. 
And the other one is that of, uh, which will be happening sometime later in the day, is a computation between the ability of a musician to compose music given the lyrics vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, given the fact that lyrics is given by uh, an AI-generated algorithm. So how do they go about uh, composing the music? That is going to be another competition. Having said that, these competitions could not have been done had it not been Miraki, the IIIT Delhi uh, artist cl uh, Art Club, and Audio Bytes, the IIIT Delhi Music Club, being there and setting up the, uh, the, the structure of the competition and conducting it in the most efficient manner, including the handprints which are out there and the doodles which are created on this whiteboard. So to begin with, may I call first the Miraki Club, Isha, to, uh, and present us. Isha and I believe Krishnam is also there will be telling us about, uh, very briefly be telling us about the structure of the competition so that you can appreciate uh, what has been presented in the foyer. Yeah, so I'm Isha and uh, this uh, is Krish. Krishnam. So we are the Meraki coordinators and we had this event called AI versus Artist. So if you came in, you might have looked at the paintings that we have outside. So uh, what we did was we had these prompts, so all of you must be aware of Dali and Stable Diffusion. So we had these some we had some prompts and we asked the artists to make whatever they think, whatever comes to their mind according to that prompt. And uh, we had these models also draw on the same uh, prompts. And then we decided to compare and see who did it better. And uh, we'll be having a debate on the same and uh, see uh, whether these models can actually replace the creativity of a human artist. Thank you. Was it Dali? an AI algorithm or was it human? And I'm sure partially the verdict is already out having, partially I believe, having seen the paintings. Obviously it is not very clear about who is the winner, I believe. And we do have an eminent artist, Mr. Amit Kalaji, who will be doing the judging and awards will be given towards the end of today's symposium. Uh, the next one I would like to call Yash from the Audio Bytes Club to come and introduce us about the nature of the competition that will be held in the evening, wherein musicians will be composing songs for a AI-generated lyrics. Yash, please come. Um, so, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, see, uh, lyrics are the main part of a song. Like, uh, lyrics are, uh, are what which define a song, the emotions and the feel in the song. But what if those lyrics are generated by an AI? Pretty strange, right? So, this is what we, uh, Audio Bites, the music club of Triplari Delhi, try to demonstrate in the symposium. We had a competition where participants were given ChatGPT lyrics. The lyrics were generated by ChatGPT3, and they were asked to compose a song uh, based on those lyrics, you know, somewhat around those lyrics. Um, the, uh, the lyrics were given to the participants on Thursday, and they had a time of two days to generate those lyrics. Uh, I think we have five participants with us right now, and uh, um, the format of the competition will be like this. Uh, the participants will be performing upon their, their song, which will be around four minutes in uh, in the one hour slot that we provided after uh, two thirty after the lunch. So I hope you guys enjoy the competition, and that's all. Mm -hmm.